Hey guys, the show here. Sorry for the very long break. I went to uh, the TFT Vegas LAN and then I came back and I was very, very sick. And then my editor was also sick, but like he was like, he got sick like after I got sick. So like I got better, but then he didn't, he, he was not like available to make videos. And then I didn't have any like footage for him for like a week. So uh, yeah, I ended up just taking a, a break, like a two week break basically, cause we were all sick. Uh, sorry about that. But anyways, we're back. And yeah, I mean, finally hit rank one the set. I know it took a while. I know some of you guys are mad that the editor puts it in the title, but like, I mean, the thing is, the only reason I wasn't ranked one is because I wasn't really enjoying Fast 9 meta, so I kind of just took a break in the middle of the launch of the set. And now that it's a uh, 4 class meta again, we're back. Anyways, and this video is just kind of going to be like telling you guys how I climbed, basically. And the gist of that is most of my LP comes from AD Flex. I'll explain what that is later in this video, but I'd probably say around 60% of my games are AD Flex. You can see four of my recent placements, all these are AD Flex. Um, and most of my bot fours are doing other stuff. Yeah, probably 60% of my games are AD Flex, maybe 10 to 20% are Ari, and then the remaining are just reroll comps like Jax, Samira, Yone. I don't have it on my match history, but like Jax, Samira, Yone, AD Flex, and Ari. I'd like to introduce you to the Mobilytics TFT overlay. You get access to the best team comps by challenger experts, myself included, directly in-game. There are also full guides attached to each comp, as well as automatic augment data and an item cheat sheet. Click the link in the description to download. Now, let's go over uh, some stuff first. I made a bunch of tier lists for AD Flex. Um, I don't know how helpful this is going to be, but this is basically the uh, AD Flex headliner tier list. Yeah, the ones you always buy, uh, Ezreal, Heartsteel, and Big Shot are good. Don't greed ever <laughs> like hard like honestly I, I think loki hard steel might be better than than big shot actually but i'm not sure caitlin's good ape is a lot better than rapid fire because it's very very easy to fit a random rapid fire in your comp but fitting an ape it requires you to play garen and if you can get to not play garen it's actually really really good but you still buy rapid fire caitlin it's fine for akali true damage is better but i mean executioner is fine you don't skip it and then for poppy i think emo poppy is a never skip unless you already have infinite frontline you really want to carry then i would consider skipping it uh but my Mosher Poppy is like way more skippable. I'd probably put Mosher Poppy like a tier or two down. The reason for that is it's one, it's really easy to fit Mosher. You're almost, I mean, I'm almost always playing around Thresh and you could also play York late game uh, and four Mosher is useless. And Emo is actually a really, really important for her, but there's no shot you're playing a Vex. Like I don't even care if you have an Akali, you're, you're, not, you're not playing Vex, man. Um, so getting the free Emo buff is really, really nice when you're getting, when you already have Mosher in your team. In the I'll allow it tier, we have just thresh on his own honestly i used to just skip country thresh but i'm pretty sure it's not even that bad because if you think about it like you're always playing thresh with york anyways i don't know man i i'm pretty sure four guardians actually just not that good so if you can fit a guardian with him easily like why not just go country you can play like a random Urgot or Samira for three country and just go nine and then just be two out of three country for the rest of the game. Or you can just sell the thing on nine. It's fine. And the buy on 4-2 tier, this is just if you see it early and it can let you stabilize you for a few rounds. Here we have Zed. I think Zed is super, super strong stage four, but once people get all their CC and like bulky frontline online, he kind of stops being able to 1v9, but he's still like really, really solid. We'll save you a bunch of HP on stage four. We have Blitz here as well if you just need a frontliner. He's decent enough, especially since no Blitz. This go Blitz probably isn't a purchase unless you're like already playing around like Gragas set or something. And then weirdly enough, even though this is like an AD flex list, a lot of time I end up just buying Ari. And if you're playing around Ezreal, like a lot of the times you, you slam blue buff anyways. Uh, and like, I don't know, if you have blue buff, red buff, like Ari can hold that stuff really, really well and you can just sell her later. And honestly, like Ari is so good. You could just keep her until level nine and then like pivot to Jin or something. Definitely like you, you buy it, like even though like I'm going into, like I'll slam stuff like even Trout and I'm like meaning to play around these AD lines, but I still won't skip Ari. She's just... She's not really an AP champion, uh, because the items she wants are just mana and attack speed, really. So it's actually reasonable to buy her a lot of the time. And then we have the buy if broke tier. Uh, you don't really, you really don't want to be buying these, but um, I mean, sometimes you're, you're broke. It is what it is. And it's better to have one of these and then roll like a couple turns later than, uh, than, than not have a chosen at all. And then that tier we have MF can just be just a tier below all the other backline forecasts like Ezreal and Caitlyn, but... Oh, she's not that bad. Uh, we have Viego. Uh, he kind of just jumps in and dies a lot of the time. I don't think he's that bad, but he requires like a really specific setup that I don't really like angling towards. And he's really, really bad as a flex unit, but he can hold you off for 4-2, 4-3. Azak, he's the worst frontline forecast, but he, I mean, he's still like, kind of tanky if you just need a frontliner for a couple turns. And then Samira. Samira's a lot worse than MF as like a random flex unit, but 
I don't know, one game I had like LW, IE, and then I just bought her and I kept her until Wolves. It wasn't even that bad because I was playing around like Thresh Frontline or something. And then I had Country Samara. It wasn't that bad. But yeah, not very often you can actually do that. And then we have Set. I mean, Set's just kind of broken in general. If you really need a frontline, you're playing on hard steel still. You can probably buy them on your four tier rollout if you're broke. And then for the item slam tier list, I, I have five tiers. We have we have the slam tier, basically always making these items when you have the components. Not much that punishes you. We have the make if it doesn't fuck up item econ. I'll explain that later. But like these are like probably like seventy to eighty percent slams. And then we have the win streak or leftover items tier. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. You slam for streak or you slam if like it's a leftover component and it just makes sense. We have the situational tier and then we have the AP slash trap items. I'll try to go through them fast. Red buff is just kind of the best item in the game. Gives you anti-heal, gives you attack speed, gives you damage boost. It's just kind of overpowered. Blue buff recently got bug fixed and buffed. They bug fixed it so where the percent damage is actually always active and they buffed it by giving 20 AD. If you didn't know, 20 AD is a lot of AD, which makes it very, very desirable on champions like Ezreal, Jin, Akon. Holly, Kiana, very, very good item. Even Zed can use it well. Even Trout here as well. Reason I prefer Even Trout over LW. The, th the thing about LW is it doesn't like, you don't get the armor reduction on the thing that does the damage. So for the example, if you, if you have an Ezreal ult with LW, the units that he ults in the backline don't get the armor shred effect. Like both of them just get armor shredded after. And then also this cloak item is not that good. So often you're just killing a cloak and it's generally better early game. So for that reason, it's basically always a slam. And then we have Crown Guard. I don't think Crown Guard's like especially good. Like I think it's a whatever tank item. But the thing about Crown Guard is, is that this rod item is even worse than cloak. And the only acceptable item you can make out of rod usually is this Crown Guard item. So you end up making it like every game. And then in the next make, if it doesn't fuck up item econ tier, basically you just make this unless it like really screws with your items. For example, like don't make IE if you need like the sword for true damage spat or something. I like, I don't know. You, you probably can move IE up one, honestly. And then Steadfast is like, you don't make Steadfast unless you, like, if you need the glove or something, like IE. DB, same thing if you just need a bunch of swords, you probably don't make DB. Bell or Warmogs, if you need, like, even try you probably don't make Warmogs. And then Windstreak or Leftover items. I mean, I don't really want to go through these. All of these are, like, acceptable. I think Runons is a little underrated. I like Runons a lot on Caitlyn, for example. Uh, it's very, very good on Zed if you ever end up playing Zed. I think it's kind of underslammed. Yeah, I don't really think there's much to talk about here. And then in the situational tier, Morello, it's a good link in my item. If the portal gives you a bunch of extra components, it's something you can consider. Probably best way to get Ansa Hale if you don't have red buff. It's just a little bit awkward sometimes. Like if you make a Morello, it's kind of hard to get a three item carry a lot of the time. So it's something I consider with extra items. Edge and and BT are kind of only good if you end up playing around a melee unit. Like a Kiana, they're okay on Akali. I actually prefer a different build on her though. And then uh, Nasher's Tooth, it's pretty bad in AD units, but... You, you can make it if you're like angling like an re duo carry or something and then qss it's like it's actually a decent attack speed item but the thing is backline cc is just not that relevant in this meta but it does use a cloak so it's definitely not horrible and then the ap trap items I don't think these items are bad, by the way. It's just I don't want to play around AP at all. You can check my match history. Probably 90% of my bot fours, it's just me coping that I can play AP. And then, I mean, I can't. And then I die. But yeah, I, I don't think these items are bad. I just think TF, Karthus are out of meta. Zig is out of meta. And then Ari doesn't even want AP. So yeah. Feels bad if you get rods, is what I'll say. Um, also, Shoujin. By the way, did get nerfed in the most recent patch, lost 5 AD and AP, but it was already just extremely overrated, honestly. Like, theoretically, you can put it on a lot of units, but in reality, it actually wasn't that good. Like, it's actually a really, really bad item on Caitlyn, but people, like, like it was a bad item on Caitlyn before the nerfs, and people were slamming it a lot. It's even her, like, super fan item, and it's, like, one of, it's basically the worst item on her besides Rage Blade. It's pretty bad on Ezreal. It's pretty bad on Ari. Like, blue buff is just so much better, I can't even, like, explain how much better it is. Um, Trojan's decent, like, TF Karthus, like I said, but I'm not trying to play those. Um, Titans is here. You might think Titans is, like, okay on, like, Akali. The, the problem with Titans Akali is that she stacks it way too slow, and she's not really, like, a, she's not really, like, a sustained champion she's a burst champion um, so you want the impact immediately outside of akali the other melee units just don't have like any meaningful ap scaling <laughs> that that's like zed and viego titan is good on like yone exactly yone 3 exactly it's not very good on yone 2 you can make yeah you make it in yone reroll and that's about it it's really bad slam otherwise. And then Ginsu. I think Ginsu is horrible on, on anyone not called Sona. If you have Sona, I'm, I'm down to make a Ginsu. Otherwise, do not make this item. I promise you it'll save you a lot of LP. That's just my playstyle though. If you really want to play around AP, I'm not stopping you. I'm just telling you what I did to climb. Uh, and this is just like component pr priority. I don't know. It's pretty self-explanatory if you look at what items I valued. But just sword, bow, or the prios. 
for red buff and all the sword items. And then glove, tier for blue buff, and just utility. And then we have the defensives, and then we have rod. The next section of the video is basically the four lines you need to know to climb. You don't need to know anything else besides these. You can just get right into it. We'll go over the simple lines first because they're very straightforward. This one is Sentinel Ari. Basically, you slam blue buff, gunblade, Nasher's Tooth, you play 6 Sentinel with Ari carry. It's so simple. Uh, you play Seraphine for KDA. If 6 Sentinel, like if, if it doesn't really work out, like you can't fit 6 Sentinel, you can play on like Sona, Lulu, Spy, Spy Spellweaver. You can play on like Braga, Salawi, depending on like Headliner. Like if you have a Headliner, Spellweaver, Ari, you can play like Sona, Yana or something. You can level to 9, play 6 Sentinel, 5 Spellweaver if you get Sentinel chosen or Spellweaver chosen. I don't know. The, the gist of it is you play Sentinel frontline with this item Ari. It's not that complicated. Uh, next line is going to be Jax. Your items you want on Jax are like JG, healing, aggro drop. The best aggro drop is Zanya's, but uh, Edge of Night is the craftable one. You need JG on him. It's like the only item that really matters a lot. And then you want healing. Hodge is best with JG, but you can go BT. It's fine. Or Gunblade. Then you go Spark on Zac, rest of items on Lux, roll on 7 for Lux 3. I actually, most, like every single Jax game I have, I've played 4 Mosher, but I've been convinced that it's 4 Mosher is just worthless. It doesn't really do anything for him. It gives him 5% more Omnivamp ish. Like it ramps up based on what he's missing, but like no item Poppy, no item uh, Urgot are not very good units, sadly. Then getting Crowd Diver for Zed and just utility is really, really good. Getting Dazzler for Lux is really, really good. Jazz on level 8 actually helps your team a lot because like the percent damage scales up all the EDM casts. It's pretty valuable actually. But yeah, very simple comp. You roll on level 6, level 7. And then you go wait. And then we have Yone reroll. Not gonna get too much into it. Just go uh, healing plus some damage on Yone. You don't have to go these items. You can go like double healing. You can go Edge of Night. It doesn't really matter that much. QSS, and then you duo carry like Viego or Zed. Ideally, it's Crowd Diver chosen. You go six Crowd Diver, but if it's not, you can fit like five Edge Lord over something, like over Echo maybe. If it's Edge chosen, if it's Heart Seal chosen, you can like keep a set for a while and go for more cash outs. So <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to switch to my uh, AD Flex slide. And you might be wondering how I'm going to show this all on a, a one tab. Bear with me, this is not gonna... Like, you look at this, and, and like, it doesn't look like anything. It looks like I just shoved a bunch of units on the comp planner. But trust me, there's like a little bit of method to this madness. Basically, I kind of built a flow chart, kinda. A very lazy flow chart. Uh, but I'll explain what that means. Basically, you want to be playing around Ezreal, Caitlyn, Akali, two out of three. And then I'm showing off the units that like support them. So we start off with Ezreal. What supports Ezreal is like Heartsteel, big shots and then see if we like it, it, it kind of like fits together like you can go Ezreal with Aphileos which works with Caitlyn you can go MF which works with Lucian which works with Caitlyn or you can just go Jen Jen doesn't really work with anyone so he's off on the side and then he works with Cassante which works with the Sentinels works with Sets which works with the Bruiser frontline whatever and then you have Caitlyn who works with Garen and then you want a Sentinel you can go Echo which is true damage which works with Senna which is rapid fire which works with Akali Kiana like you, you, you kind of get what I mean this, these are like the units I'm prioring on my rolldown and like kind of what internal synergies I am considering with each other. So say I hit an early chosen Akali, I'm going to be looking for the Senna, Echo, Garen, Caitlyn line. But if I hit chosen Ezreal, I'm going to be looking for like MF, Aphelios, Caitlyn, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I'm hoping this is making some kind of sense. As for frontline, the uh, the Sentinels kind of go together. You can go four Sentinel with some of this sometimes. It's like a low cap. Uh, the, the cap is like set to allow a Yorick Thresh. This is what you should be striving for most games. Uh, Poppy kind of fits in with Mosher with Set if you get like chosen Poppy. And then the true damage cannon works with the Thresh. Like there, there's been a time where I've bought like all these units on a rolldown, but this is kind of what I'm thinking <laughs> when I'm doing a 4 2 rolldown. I'm hoping this is making like a little bit of sense. But the, the gist of it is that it's not a cookie cutter board every single time. It's going to depend a lot on which headliner you hit first. And I hopefully I showed how to like mix and match them a little bit. I don't know. And yeah, we'll, and then I'll show off a game that kind of utilizes the, these concepts. There's a game I played a couple days ago. Probably see what portal it. It's three champions. Notable thing about three champions, if you get six gold early, like I did here, if you find an Olaf or a Tom Kench, you can uh, solo 1-3 100% of the time, no fail, which lets you make 10 gold. I didn't get an Olaf or a Kench, so I didn't get to do that. But trust me, if I hit one of those units, I, I would have uh, made 10 and played one unit. Don't, I don't really think I mentioned it, but like my strategy this patch in the early game has usually just been loose streak unless I have like a really, really strong opener. Okay, also, I think I was tired at this point. I should have made 10. I don't know why I didn't. I think I just had a brain fart. 
I should have sold the three units on my bench. It's fine though. Like, yeah, minus one gold, all good. But yeah, I, I, I meant I meant to make three there. But like, I see my opener. I don't have any damage. I could AFK or like turn my brain off and like level for country Tom Kench plus Bruiser Olaf. That would be my strongest board. But that board's not going to win any round versus a good board. Also, I should probably talk about my augment choice. Uh, golden ticket. We're not rerolling. Hero presence bad. Um, I actually think. Salvage bin is really, really good. Uh, the problem is I don't think I'm very, very good. <laughs> and you have to be really, really good to use Salvage bin. I think theoretically, like a TFT AI, Salvage bin is probably the best augment in the game. If you're a normal human, this augment is going to cost you like at least 10 HP on your transition turn. You're gonna mess it up. I I really have not seen a person do it perfectly ever. Like at least the big rollouts. And 10 HP is a lot, but yeah. I just take Vampirism. I I, I think uh Gold Vampirism's a better augment than Gold Epitaph, I'd say, yeah. That's why I took it. Okay. I I mean I think both Vampirisms are very good. They're like basically equal in the stats. I like both of them. And then make 10, play whatever board. And then I see that this opener isn't going anywhere. I could buy the Jinx, I could slam an LW, play like two Sentinel, but then I mean what's the point? I'd rather just make 20. Or to less the first round, might as well go for a loose streak. Uh, in set 10, they like reduce the player damage on stage two quite a bit. So we're going to take advantage of that and just lose streak. Don't really need to see this. And unfortunately, since I didn't make a uh, 10 gold earlier, I uh, I couldn't couldn't make 30 here by selling the Cassante. If I made gold on the augment round, I could just sell Cassante for 30 and I probably would have. But we messed up, so we have to live with the uh, Live with what we did. I scouted around and saw that no one was actually going for a full loss streak, so I uh, tried. I played all these useless units to try to kill something. End up killing one. It's pretty good. And then on carousel, I think I would go for bow here for red buff. It got taken, so probably just gonna go sword. Yep. Thinking back to the item prio I talked about earlier. Uh, just scouting around, seeing if our loose streak is contested, and then hold the Kaisa. Um, the main thing about this loose streak strat is that you actually usually have to be strong on stage three. It's you're you're not gonna play swell if you uh are recon if you five lost stage two and then also lose streak stage three because all it takes is like a little bit of unlucky matchmaking in stage four for you to just die so our goal is to be weak in stage two and then strong in stage three and usually the way to be strong in stage three th the shop was ridiculous by the way I, I got kaisa two plus four sentinel but just a general rule of thumb the best stage three boards are ones with lots of single target and very strong frontline. And that's basically what we're getting here. We're getting four Sentinel plus Kaisa, which is a strong single target. Lots of frontline plus sustain is also another way you can uh, win in stage three. But also another thing is that it's easier to be stronger stage three when you're loose streaking than win streaking, surprisingly. Because number one, like the one costs aren't that strong. So you're not going to be that punished for not having the one, the one costs. And two, um, you'll have better items than everyone, usually, since you got a Carousel Prio. So see, like, here, just for an example, this guy has, like, Sunfire Cloak as his items, doesn't want to slam anything, because, like, I mean, he can't really make anything. The only thing he can make is, like, an even trout, but he might want to play AP, so it's a little bit awkward for him. But I have Red Buff IE because I got the Sword on Carousel, right? Um, I think it's close between Bulk and Silver Veil. I think I gravitated Bulk because it had sense at all. I think Silver Rare is like good though. Maybe even was better. I just went bulk though. It's fine. And then we level. Don't really have anything like I should clearly play. I, I guess I was rolling for Echo. I was rolling for Echo or KDA, I guess. Six Sentinel or, or KDA. I think that's reasonable. I can make 40 easily. I can't make 50 this turn no matter what. Find the KDA. Yep, makes sense. I usually actually uh, don't end up holding random Zeds that I find, even though he's like good. The times I play around Zed are usually just times I hit like Zed Chosen. So I don't really find that much value in holding the Zed. And then yeah, we just win because we're stronger than him. Urgot's actually pretty strong here. The problem is I just ruined my frontline by buying him, so I'm just not going to deal with that. Uh, next turn, we're just going to level for Superfan and Guardian with the Kennen. End up beating an Annie 3 because he doesn't have items. It's not the Shojin, has frontline trash. Uh, and then this Carousel. Oh, yeah, I get a uh, 6 Sentinel plus Even Shroud. Very, very good. Um, yeah, I think I probably al always would have gone built. Even Shroud is the only slam that makes that like helps me here. And then the plan was originally to go super fun with Kennen. So I don't think I would have gone non even trout ever because I can get three items if I wanted it. So even trout makes a lot of sense. And then we're just six sentinel. So we kind of just win. Hold the thresh because the thresh Kennen flow chart thing we talked about earlier. I also think just thresh is usually just the strongest frontliner because he gives you CC, reliable CC, and he's just tanky as well. Unlike Zach, which is tanky, but very unreliable CC. And then 
wait one because we're healthy enough i mean i think i would always wait one here only times i four one is when i'm like like super super rich or like dying and need to hit before anyone else i uh, just spread these components for bulk I, I don't really see myself playing six cents in all this game so i'm fine just putting items on Lilium, the guy uh don't bulk the war mugs you want to keep the even trot alive here i took little buddies honestly like in hindsight i don't think it was that like i, I don't know if it was that good in it, i think it ended up being good on my late game board but it was super awkward on stage four and I think Contagion might have just been better. Little Buddies is good if you can get value out of it, but sometimes you're like forcing yourself to play units you normally wouldn't, and that's kind of awkward. Okay, I should probably slow down for the rolldown, because like that's probably one of the most important parts. So first thing we do here is we sell our headliner, uh, looking for the four costs. Don't want Lulu. Buy the MF in case we hit Ezreal. And then we see the Akali, if we remember back to the headliner thingy. Akali, we have her in Broken Tier, so we're not going to skip her. Um, I will say, though, the items aren't the best. We don't really have a third item for her right now. I, I actually think I should have summed red buff on her. I ended up I ended up uh, not summing red buff on her, but we don't have a third item for her right now. But we still buy her. And now that we have the Akali, we're looking for like the true damage stuff. End up selling the MF, because it's very unlikely to play on our Ezreal. Find the Alawi, find the Echo sell the Aphelios because we're not playing around the Caitlyn Aphelios as real line anymore. Put in true damage, looking for what to play. Uh, right now we have two open slots, I don't need to play this Corky, so we're likely going to fit in for true damage with the cannon and then like a Lowey or Thresh probably. Okay, seems like I wanted the, the Ziggs to put a red buff on. Yeah. Uh... I think, yeah, I think I ended up red buffing the Ziggs. Um, better play was probably a Lowey over Ziggs, and then just red buff the Akali, but it's fine. Items on Echo since he's pretty tanky, and then yeah. Hopefully, like, some of that flowchart stuff made sense. Like, you, you did see me hold the uh, MF and the Aphelios, because, like, I, it wasn't clear I was going to play Akali this game. I could have played Ezreal, but we hit the Akali first, right? And we find the Kiana, which is, like, insane, obviously. We have Thresh 2, so we drop the 4 Sentinel. Uh, I think here is that I'm actually only getting uh, one... Oh. We're, I'm only getting one little buddy value, which is the Senna. So this kind of made me think that I shouldn't have uh, taken this augment, but it ended up working out. Also, I didn't notice this until a couple rounds later. I should have just sold this Echo and played a uh, Cannon and items on Thresh. Thresh 2 is way better than Echo 1. Uh, and then I also could have dropped Blitzcrank for a uh, little buddy as well. That, that, that's what I should have done here. Um, the main thing I'm looking for in this spot, like you, you might think it's weird to keep rolling after hitting your carry two star and your tank two star, but what I'm looking for here is basically just as like Caitlyn, like a duo carry that can hold this red buff. Again, again though, I probably should just rub off the Akali. It is what it is. I think with uh, those optimizations, I could have won those last two fights and been even higher HP. Find a Lucian, which kind of fills in for Caitlyn. But yeah, again, I'm just still playing this Echo when I have a way better frontline available. Okay, I see it now. I see it now. This is much stronger. Uh, also, and then I now I have a random Blitzcrank in, but it is what it is. There are worse units to have on your board sometimes. And then I see Blitz 2, and then I'm like, sure, I'll just take this. Then we find the Caitlyn. Okay, I, I end up, uh, like, this might look weird. Like, maybe I should be trying to push 9. But I think my read on this lobby was that I wasn't actually that strong. I didn't have any hard still cash outs, for example. And uh, I thought the rest of the lobby was going to be super, super strong. So I, I end up just like basically rolling to zero here to uh, try to go fourth, I think. And then end up hitting Caitlyn too, which is extremely, extremely lucky. I'm not very, it's not very often I actually hit this unit here, but. I think I might have scouted and, and seen that there weren't any. Um, awkward, really, really awkward here. I end up having two items on both these carries. Uh, that's usually not what you want to do. The, the thing is I had two rods, so it was kind of always had to make a Gunblade. You could argue I'm supposed to Gunblade my Caitlyn, maybe? So I have three items, but yeah, you kind of want to itemize your carry. Which is why I probably should have just red buffed her. Or red buffed the Akali earlier. And yeah, this is the board. Ideally, we get to push 9 from the spot, but if we take a couple bad losses, I just roll to 0 every single turn for Kiana, basically. Also, like, if uh, this Akali was true damage instead of Executioner, for example, um, we could play Echo over Blitzcrank for 6 true damage. Or if we had true damage spent on Caitlyn, we could do the same thing. And then, yeah, we just uh, play stage 4, lose the Yone 3, there's a Kiana with Spark on Carousel, since it's a shit item, I actually end up getting it, which is huge, and it's spreading for bulk. 
Boost to any. Problem is with that carousel is that I did not get a uh, third item for either of my two star carries, so we're still struggling with that. We're kind of hoping on Kiana to farm us an item. I just ended up doing a little positioning, trying to keep Akali and Kiana safe from targeting or enemy carry targeting. Find a Jin one, that's pretty good. And Caitlyn one shots it. Farm to cloak, make it a dragon. Get a uh, a third item for Akali. End up leveling for like a Katarina. Basically because I have little buddies. Uh, if I didn't have little buddies, I'd probably play like... I don't even know. I don't know. Like, like I probably actually would play Groudiver. Either that or just like a Lowey one. A Lowey one's fine here as well. Probably I probably would play a Lowey if I didn't have little buddies. And then now that we have three items on my units, actually beat the Spellweaver guy. Lose the Jax board. To me, it looks like I'm just trying to get a second to get out. Take a Hodge for Caitlyn since she has IE. A little bit of synergy there. Oh no, I put a... Uh, Hodge on Kiana, that makes sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. Never mind. Fight a ghost, which is just a free one. So many ghost bugs. I mean, the rest of this game is not that interesting. Uh, we get lucky in the site against the Jax. Sun out with Kiana. Get three items on Kiana and kind of just start winning. The Kiana scalings in full force. I got a bunch of extra items with bulk. And if Kiana hits one sun on Jax, the fight's basically over. Uh, swap the stone plate and remake Kennen. Insta sun the Jax, so fight's basically over. And then we win. Uh, into that game was important. The important thing was just the uh, the rolldown. So basically, this patch just was like a, a quick summary. A flex almost every game. Buy these headliners. Slam these items. Uh, go for these components. Know how to play Ari, Jax, and Yone if you have to. But uh, stick with the AD flex. Buy these units on rolldown. Play around like the Ezreal Caitlyn combo, the Caitlyn Akali combo, the Ezreal MF Jin combo. Aphelios, Ezreal, Caitlyn, Caitlyn, Garen, Echo, True Damage, Frontline, Four Sentinel, Caitlyn, Frontline, Ezreal, Set, Alawi, Yorick, Frontline, Thresh, Kennen, Yorick, Poppy. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just yapping. But hopefully, like, this makes a little bit of sense. If you got, like, a, like if you understand, like, 20% of what I'm saying, you'll probably gain, like, at least 100 LP. No ad. But yeah, that's gonna be it for me. Hope you uh, enjoyed this video on how I, uh, on how I climbed. Peace.